My name is Martha Heavener. I'm a planner at the Cape Cod Commission. And tonight we're here to talk about the Outer Cape Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. What I'd like to do is uh, give you an overview of the agenda tonight, today, what we're going to talk about, and um, then I'll go through the presentation, and um, we'll get through uh, an exercise, a mapping exercise as well. We'll start out with some project background. I know for a lot of you, um, you may not be familiar with the project. This is, in fact, the third public workshop we've had. Um, we had the other two in, in Provincetown and Wellfleet. Um, after a little bit on the project background, we'll talk about some of the alternatives development process, how we got to where we are today. Um, then we'll take a little break from the presentation and hear from our steering committee members uh, from Provincetown, Truro, and Wellfleet to give you some updates on what's going on in their towns. And then we'll talk about the potential alternatives and eventually get into a mapping exercise where we like to hear from you all what your preferences are for a preferred route between Wellfleet, Truro, and Provincetown. So the purpose of today's meeting, and again, this is the third public workshop, is first we want to re-engage people. We haven't had a public meeting um, on the plan or a public workshop since last March. And I want to get people energized again about the project, and especially people in Provincetown. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, we want to come here and make sure that you're on board with the plan as well. We wanted to talk about the alternatives, where we are and what alternatives we have uh, in the process at this point. And we, uh, as I said a moment ago, want to get your input on a preferred alternative. So just a little bit of background. The master plan is a comprehensive plan to provide safe and comfortable bicycle and pedestrian routes and amenities between Provincetown, Wellfleet, and uh, Truro, Provincetown goes Wellesley, Truro, and Provincetown, and also to provide bicycling and pedestrian connections to destinations within the towns and to destinations in the seashore. The plan is guided by a steering committee that I mentioned a moment ago. It's made up by two representatives from each of the three towns. We have a town official and a, uh, a chair of the town bicycling and pedestrian committee. Staff uh, to the committee is the Cape Cod Commission staff and National Park Service, uh, Cape Cod National Seashore staff. Public input is a huge part of the plan. Um, that's why we're here tonight, and we've been seeking public input since the launching of the plan in June of 2014. In the end, after we collect all the public input, uh, we hope and we plan that the master plan will uh, be a comprehensive set of routes and facilities and amenities uh, between the three towns and a list of projects in each town for implementation. So I'll just run through the goals briefly. Uh, one of the goals is to minimize, uh, to, sorry, to provide uh, better biking and pedestrian connections throughout the three towns and provide a uh, and what we call the Outer Cape experience through better bicycling and pedestrian amenities. While we're doing that, we want to minimize uh, any adverse environmental or cultural resource impacts. We also want to, while we're uh, developing the plan, we want to make sure that we capitalize on any opportunities that might be provided by any work going on uh, in the towns on our roadways. When we see a road, uh, a road project happening, that's an opportunity to consider whether that might be an opportunity for additional bicycle and pedestrian accommodation. We want to seek opportunities to enhance adjacent areas through additional amenities where the bike uh, accommodations may be. And we also want to maximize the use of existing assets. We've got a lot of roads um, between the three towns and within the three towns that through some retrofitting may be adequate for, um, for uh, improved facilities. I want to emphasize that this plan isn't a plan by the Cape Cod uh, Commission or the uh, Cape Cod National Seashore. It's really a partnership. It's a partnership between the three towns of Provincetown, Truro, and Wellfleet, Cape Cod Commission, and National Seashore uh, for the National Park Service. We are the primary partners. Other important players um, in the development of the plan are the Cape Cod Legislative Delegation, um, 
Senator Wolf and Representative Peek have been very supportive and they're aware of this plan and, and we um, thank them for their help on it. Um, Mass, Mass DOT, the Mass Department of Transportation, as well as DCR, the Division of Conservation and Recreation, and the uh, Regional Transit Agency are also other agencies that uh, we will be partnering with um, and there are other players involved as we develop the plan. So just talk briefly on the previous workshops that we had. The first one was back in October of 2014, and at that time we were just completing our data collection. Um, I consider it sort of our, our uptake phase where we were uh, collecting data on the roadways and, and the existing facilities. And at that time, at our public workshop, we simply asked people to show us where do you bike, where do you walk, where do you want to go, and what are some of the destinations that you go to. And also, locate, tell us where there's hazards or problem spots in your towns. And a lot of those ended up, the results of that mapping project showed a lot of crossings on Route 6. And uh, we also asked people, are there destinations within the, sh the seashore that you'd like to see better accommodations? We followed that up with another workshop in, in the spring of 2015. And at that workshop, we took the information that we collected at that first workshop, and we turned it into some potential route concepts um, a, for a primary route between Wellfleet and Provincetown, and also concepts for local routes within the towns themselves. And we asked people, after we put together those routes, to identify for us what are their priorities, which do you like the best, and also tell us what kind of accommodation are you looking for on that part of the route. Is it, would you like uh, an accommodation as a bike lane or a paved shoulder or a separated multi-use path? And we also asked people to annotate the maps, just throw down any information that you think is important that we need to know as we continue with the development of the plan. So following that workshop, we began our environmental analysis, and we also took the route segments that we'd asked people about in the previous workshops, and we started some uh, evaluation for the criteria, the goals and the criteria of the plan. And this helped us screen out certain routes that might not uh, meet some of the criteria, and it also helped us begin to develop uh, those, what we see today are the primary route alternatives. So uh, after that workshop last spring, and as we did our evaluation, uh, we did some more work. As I said a moment ago, we refined the concepts that we've been working on. And this came largely from um, meeting with uh, Mass Department of Transportation, Mass DOT, this summer. We wanted to make sure that if we were talking about improvements to Route 6, potential additional accommodations on Route 6, we wanted to make sure that that was viable, that we weren't writing a plan that actually wouldn't be implemented. So we met with Mass DOT, and they were open to uh, possibly having a separated multi-use path on Route 6. We also, a big part of our work this summer was going back to the town bike committees and asking them, do we have your local routes right? What are your list of projects that you want to see implemented? Do we have them right? And let us know if there's more. So we continue to work with the bike committees to refine those routes. And so with that, since I mentioned the town bike committees, I thought we, uh, what we've done at every workshop is have the steering committee members from the towns get up and talk a little bit about what's going on in their towns. Uh, the three towns each have very active bike committees, and uh, there's actually a lot going on. So um, I guess, Roger, you always seem to like to go first. <laughs> um, or you don't mind going first, let's put it that way. Um, so first I'll introduce Roger Shabbat. Roger and Eric Larson are the two representatives on the steering committee from Provincetown. Thank you, Robbie. I always like uh, speaking of work simply from a uh, prepared text. So I hope not. The evaluation of the rail trail extension in Provincetown should be seen as part of the overall plan to improve transportation under all its modes here in Provincetown. There is no doubt that the volume of cyclists has seen a dramatic increase these last few years, and we feel the pressure here in town, perhaps the most bike-friendly community on Cape Cod. We are definitely a bikeable community. 
Of course, this has consequences given the nature of the interaction between pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, and truck drivers. Add to this mix the broad spectrum of reasons people ride bicycles, from their prime means of transportation, to athletic racing, to leisurely touring with children in tow. One solution does not fit all. These public meetings have been spaced fairly well apart, and in the meantime, research and progress has been made. The location of the trail through Wellfleet and Truro has been complicated since the rail bed no longer exists in some cases. Here in Provincetown, it still exists between the Truro line and Holland Street, then down Harrow to the pier. That does not mean a slam dunk solution, however, because today we face more competing interests than the, rail, than the railroad did. So we need to explore all the options and then, with the wisdom of Solomon, come up with the best solutions, not just for the next few years, but for many decades to come. There is no one size fits all. Among the competing values we find efficiency, safety, privacy, aesthetics, environmental quality, recreation, education, and cost. We on the committee are also concerned about constantly reinventing the wheel. Our committee has been at work for the last three years, meeting with varied shareholders, including MassDOT, etc. Um, we are well aware that our responsibility is to create a master plan for the trail that will run the entire spine of Cape Cod eventually, from the canal to McMillan Pier. Each town will also determine bicycling networks to help visitors explore their communities, learn their history, and discover their resources. Here in Provincetown, our options are quite limited because we have a long, narrow structure with only three competing roadways, Route 6, Route 6A, and the rail bed. So keep, in, keep those in mind as you examine the maps and see the different colored options. For the time being, our scope today does not cover downtown commercial or Bradford streets, nor any of the connectors. For sure, our choice from the Truro line to Snail Road will pretty much determine where the rest of the plans will take us. When the Province on Bicycling Committee gets together next Wednesday, we will put together the wealth of material that we have gathered over the past summer, and we will make our recommendations for the traffic study. You are all welcome to join us as we work through that. One thing seems pretty certain. The project will be moving forward and, we, and will affect us for many years to come. For example, in the state's long-range plans, by 2030, all road projects will have to include provisions for bike lanes. Already this past year, the state has amended the bicycling laws closely aligned with the PAMAS principle. Same road, same rights, same rules. For sure, all of this first, all of this is first of all a long road of education, and how we choose to coexist as a community with a multimodal transportation. It is not a matter of one mode overpowering the others, but a matter of integrating the various means into networks where we can all move about safely with respect for one another. We'll have a lot more specifics on our traffic plan once we integrate all of the research that we've done this summer. Like I spent a total of about almost 80 hours just counting cars and traffic. Thanks. From Gulfly, our representatives are Suzanne Thomas and Sarah Hutchings, uh, neither of whom could be here today. So we asked Brian Carlson, the uh, Assistant Town Administrator of Wellfleet, to give an update, um, not so much on the bike pen stuff that's going on right now, but about um, a project that a lot of you may have heard about, about the upcoming improvements to the Main Street Route 6 intersection um, that is scheduled for construction in 2019? Uh, at least two or three years out. Okay. Yeah. But you want to talk about it for a second? Yeah. Let people know? Right, okay. right. Yeah, oh yeah, you can just, uh, whatever you got. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do, you, do you want to use it? Sometimes I have a stage voice, but... Mics are good. Hello, everybody. 
Um, so, a very quick update. I brought some uh, maps of um, some alternatives that the Town of Wellfleet is examining for this intersection. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, it pretty much causes a huge bottleneck and a lot of traffic during the summer uh, for all of us going both directions. Um, I wish I did have this graphic for you to see, but as you can see, it's full of color. Um, the intersection is a confluence of uh, many resource areas, um, creeks, flood zones, um, areas of environmental concern, cemeteries, historic sites, um, stores, a pharmacy, pedestrians, bikes, cars, um, traffic light. Uh, so it's a quite um, a busy intersection, as you probably know. Uh, so the town has been examining uh, four different alternatives. Um, actually, all alternatives except for alternative three are proposing the same um, at the site. A six-foot sidewalk on both sides of Route 6 and a five-foot on-street bike accommodation on Route 6 on the shoulder. Um, the one alternative that's slightly different is alternative three, which is proposing a five-foot grass strip between the sidewalk and the roadway. And, um, Please feel free to look at graphics if yeah, you want to. Yeah, I'll put them up in the back. Um, we're, we've been working with the Cape Cod Commission and the county um, to um, make sure this is a priority for funding coming up. And uh, we are on, on the list and we hope to remain on the list uh, for funding in the coming years. So we're thinking two to three years out, this project will, um, will break rank. And we're hopeful that that will stay the case. Um, it also involves uh, Main Street, so there's um, some work and alternatives being looked at there, but I know we're probably mainly concerned about Route 6 at this moment. Um, but I can try and answer any questions. Suzanne um, Thomas is our uh, Community Services Director and is highly involved with this, but she cannot be here this evening, so I'm standing here. Um, all this information is on the Town of Wellfleet website. Um, it goes back to the meeting notes from several years ago up to present day, and um, you can download any of this information, the graphics, and um, it's wellfleet-ma.gov. And actually, part of the reason why we asked Brian to come talk about that intersection is that um, that ties into some of the future routing opportunities that we're looking at. So um, it's, uh, it's just sort of in the back of our mind as we're planning for improvements in Wellfleet. And so last, uh, Karen Snow from the Truro Bike and Walkways Committee will give an update in Truro. Is he bike? Uh, hi, so um, we have a couple of things. Uh, the biggest thing right now that uh, we think is happening is we had put in a request. Um, the, the Truro Bike Committee put a request into the Board of Selectmen. The Selectmen then, for us, put it in with Mass DOT to convert the breakdown lanes along Route 6 in the town of Truro to real bike lanes. And, uh, and the list of things that we asked for in that request is basically to stop calling them breakdown lanes and to call them publicly bike lanes. So signage in the air that indicates it's a bike lane, um, repainting the line so that the breakdown lane has a consistent width, as anyone knows who does cycle along Route 6. The breakdown lane disappears at some points and then you're just kind of on your own in the road. So we're asking for a consistent uh, five foot width all the way through the town of Truro and to have bike symbols painted on that. And then some other upgrades as well that we're asking for. Um, we need some shoulder improvement in a couple of places like on the hills where after rainstorms we end up with lots of sand wash out into those lanes. Um, and um, shoulder improvements. Um, we also have asked for, but we're now separating it into a separate request, talk about road redesign. Um, we want MassDOT to take a look at reconfiguring what's called the pinch, which is where the four lanes and the two lanes, um, where it goes from four lanes as you're heading westbound to the two lanes. And that is a real problem. It really presents a hazard for cyclists that are trying to get across that intersection. But we're separating it out from this request on their recommendation because if we
we tie them all together, we'll never get the bike lanes. We've actually gotten a response from uh, the executive director of MassDOT, and they have indicated on paper that uh, they absolutely agree with the bike lane, the breakdown bike lane conversion, and what they've said is spring of 2016. So we are pushing forward with that. Um, I've just sent a priority list today to um, the Atomic Administrator, Toro, and so she's gonna push that forward. And we're gonna hopefully see if we can get, you know, bike lane painted and signed by spring of next year. Um, so that's our main thing. And then we're just now starting to work on a um, uh, formulating a plan and upgrade list basically for the town of Truro for some upgrades that we can do to our roads that will better accommodate bicycles and pedestrians. Some of it will be paving, some of it might be striping, um, possibly widening, but we're pretty much staying away from that avenue. Um, and we're also um, just getting together to try to figure out, we've talked about it, but we're, we're following through more with a pricing scheme to see about putting together safety packs for foreign workers who rely on bicycles for transportation. And we want to include helmets, reflectors for bikes, and lights, and that we can give these out to foreign workers so that when they're riding at night, they can be seen better on the roads. So, I think we just have, just have one more update. Uh, Lauren McKean. National Seashore Planner. You want to tell us what's going on? Yeah. Sure. Well, I think what we've heard uh, already uh, right now is that it's going to take all kinds of incremental actions to make this whole master plan knit together. Uh, I just wanted to mention two things that will factor in to bike safety. Uh, one is a project that's somewhat unrelated to this master plan process, but we're calling it Bicycle Safe Crossings. We have five motion-activated signal cross, crossings uh, that are being proposed and one pedestrian hybrid, hybrid beacon. That one is at um, Governor Prince Road in East Town. We all are probably familiar with that down in Fort Hill and how nobody can get across to Fort Hill to, on, on a bike or, or walking or whatnot. I have a couple of little graphics here. I'll just leave it up front. Um, very minimal graphics, actually. And then, um, so that is going to take some doing through MassDOT. Uh, we've been to the East Ham Selectments meeting and bringing them along. Uh, and we have a contractor on board to do design build drawings for that. Uh, we also are doing five motion activated signals. So, Nossa Road um, and at Railroad Ave and by the Tilt Pond plant, if you're aware of it, in Northeast Ham. But uh, more importantly, for as we go north, uh, our Coney Beach Road crossing, um, and then um, there's three up in Provincetown. There's Moore's Road. There's uh, the Province Sense Bike Trail at the airport, and also at Beach Forest. So uh, it should be, you know, very useful to have those put in place. Some recent really good news we had. Uh, we have put all of our projects into uh, into a really uh, highly scrutinized process to get federal funds. Great thing is, with transportation projects, we can get Department of Transportation funds. So in fact, this master plan is funded by a National Park Service application to the Paul Sarbanes Transit, Transportation and Parks grant source. Um, also coming out of the Department of Transportation funds are funds for rehabilitating Head of the Meadow Bike Trail, which I know some of you will be very happy to hear about. Right now we're on the docket for fiscal year 17 for that. Our fiscal year is October, starts October 1, the year before. Generally what happens is we don't get the funds released until later in that year. It may just be that we get the contract work established through that year. But anyway, anticipated in 17 or 18. Uh, so that's a two mile long trail, which has uh, got a lot of um, problems with it right now, basically from roots and water damage and that kind of thing. And uh, there's a six tenths of a mile extension that you're going to see on maps in the back when we go back, and we believe we can get that done as well. Great. So just move it along a little bit now. Um, I'm going to ask Sarah Korchak, um, also 
looking at country mission plan or to now start uh, talk about the primary route alternatives, which will lead into the workshop. Thanks, Martha. So thanks, Martha. So the main reason we're here today really is to get your input on uh, a possible spine or primary route that would connect from Wellfleet, where the Cape Cod Rail Trail ends right now, all the way up to Provincetown. So we have three alternatives that we've put together. Um, we're going to put them onto maps for you. I, I want to just start off uh, by saying that because we're talking about the primary alternative, or the primary route um, alternatives, there's an assumption that we want to accommodate as many and as varied uh, a number of users as we can. So we're assuming that the primary routes would have a significant accommodation, whether that takes the form of a multi-use path that's separated from the roadway, what, or perhaps a fork of wide shoulder or some other form of special accommodation. Um, so in looking at the possible primary routes, because of that need to, be, um, to have uh, that level of accommodation, some of the options we were considering earlier have dropped off the table, but only dropped off as a primary route, because secondary routes can really take any form of accommodation that the towns want. It could be as little as simply signing a route, or it could be as significant as a multi-use um, separated trail. So, moving along here. Um, oops. Fast. Nice. I'm gonna go. There we go. All right, so, and I apologize, this is a, kind of a washed out graphic, but you're gonna get a chance to look at the map um, that's much brighter right up close. Um, so we have three alternatives, and you'll see on this map each of the three primary route alternatives is shown in a different color, red, blue, and green. And they take, in some areas, they each take a separate path, and in other areas, they are all in the same place. Um, so we're going to be looking at them, um, and I'm going to walk you through each of the three alternatives so you have a general sense of, of where they go, and then we're going to ask you all to help show us what you think would be the best path for this primary route um, through the different sections of the outer cave. Okay, so I want to start with alternative A, which we refer to somewhat as the, um, the old rail bed and bike, pack, bike path option, simply because it incorporates the remaining segments of the rail bed and existing bike path um, the, at the Meadow Trail. But I want to start starting at the southernmost point because that's where the rail trail ends off right now. Um, this begins. Is there a point on this? Is that? Sure. I can't even. I'm not sure. Oh, I got it. Right there, thanks. Um, so starting at the um, where the Cape Cod Rail Trail ends at the Town Hollow Road, this path, alternative A, which is shown in red, um, follows the ra old rail bed through Wellfleet. It has a short jog on Old Kings Highway um, and connects to. Hollow Road, bringing it right up to Route 6 near where the Main Street intersection is that we just heard about. It then follows Route 6, as, and I should mention um, just the, what the accommodations would be proposed for each of these. So along the old rail bed, which is currently unpaved, uh, we would recommend that it stay unpaved, a hardened but unpaved surface. Along the existing local roadways here, uh, the accommodation would be a, pave, a four foot paved bicycle shoulder or a bicycle lane. And then along Route 6, anytime we're talking about accommodating along Route 6, it's a separate multi use trail. Um, so, following this alternative, uh, along Route 6, all the way up to the Truro Town line, and then at Rose Road and Collins Road, coming off onto the local roadway here as a, um, as a um, four foot bike lane. Continuing along South Hammond Road, back to Truro Center, again as a four-foot um, bike lane, and then back onto Route 6, and as we head north, um, as we head north, then picking this up, this is um, Truro Center again, with South Hammond Road coming in, following Route 6 all the way through the central part of Truro, past the Truro Center School, and then here at South Highland Road, coming off onto the road and again taking the form of a paved shoulder, um, continuing on up to Coast Guard Beach, and then as Lauren just mentioned, a short unpaved segment of the Old Kings Highway there that connects right up to the head of the Meadow Beach and the head of the Meadow Bike Trail. 
Um, and again, as with the last unpaved section, um, we would recommend the accommodation proposed there would be to keep it um, dirt or unpaved, uh, but certainly hardened so to make it easy for bicycle use. And then again, I'm following the existing bicycle trail here um, to High Head Road, and then back onto Route 6, following it along Pilgrim Lake or East Harbor, all the way into Provincetown until you get to Snail Road. And at that point, the path would turn um, down to the south to catch up with the existing uh, railroad bed that runs in Provincetown. Again, an unpaved surface. Um, and so the proposed accommodation here is, is to keep it unpaved, uh, but hardened. And then back out on, um, I'll the street name, Howland. How, Howland, sorry. Um, following Howland Road back onto Route 6, and then back onto Conwell um, and Cemetery Road, down into the town center. Um, and on the local roads, and I think, you know, uh, Prop Town put a lot of time and effort into designing uh, the path down to town center. Certainly, we want to coordinate with the towns, but the idea is, it, is the primary route would provide uh, a four-foot bike lane on any of the local roadways. All right, so that's alternative A. Alternative B, you'll see some uh, repetition of what you saw in alternative A. This, we call the scenic local roads option because it tends to um, take a less direct route but provide a path that follows along some of the local scenic roads. So specifically starting in the southern portion again at Lacan Hall Road, it follows Lacan Hall Road and Ocean View Drive through Wellfleet with a, with a uh, paved bike lane. Again, down Moon Hollow Road, back to uh, near the Main Street intersection of Route 6. And as the last alternative did, it follows Route 6 as a multi-use path all the way up onto Rose and Collins Road, where it would switch back to Lane uh, and to South Hammond Road. I'm going to advance us north. And again, picking up um, at South Hammond and Trail Center, staying on Route 6 all the way up to South Highland Road. And here's where it changes a little bit from the last alternative and follows Highland Road underneath Route 6, in the, uh, which uh, an underpass there, and onto Route 6A. Um, and that would be, again, with a paved um, four-foot bike lane. Following Route 6A all the way along um, through the Beach Point area, into Provincetown, and then onto Commercial Street, leading down into Alternative C is uh, a multi-use path that follows the path of Route 6 all the way from Wellfleet up to Provincetown. So here, um, we get right off of the County Hollow Road where the existing rail trail ends, right onto Route 6 with a multi-use trail following all the way up through um, Truro. So some of these areas you've seen on the previous maps. But here, again, following, here's a Truro Center, following it all the way through the town of Truro, past uh, East Harbor, staying on Route 6, all the way through Provincetown, all the way out to Curry Cove Beach. And taking advantage, for specifically, I should mention that uh, the Route 6 multi-use path, separated path, um, could be located on either the east or the west side. We have not um, limited the options um, there. I mean, either one could be considered, except for in a few specific areas where we know there are resource constraints, and one of the most obvious ones of those is here in Provincetown, where we want to avoid the wetlands around Shank Painter, and also take advantage of the existing uh, layout for Route 6 that was unused and falls to the north and connects all the way out to um, Carrie Beach. Alternative D, so, uh, of course, so these are all the primary routes. Obviously, only one of them will be selected as the pr final primary route. But anything that's not selected as a primary route can be considered as a secondary route. Um, so um, nothing really falls off the table completely. And it'll really be determined by conversations with the towns that follow up on this um, to see where the town priorities are, where they'd like to put their efforts in the secondary routes. Um, but just as an example of looking into uh, Wellfleet, some of the secondary routes that were identified have really different goals. Um, one here in Wellfleet Center, leading into Wellfleet Center, Briar Lane, the town's goal was really to provide improved 
pedestrian access. Um, so uh, there, the proposal includes a sidewalk. Uh, and then in, as another alternative to that, or as another uh, local secondary route option, is looking at Chiquesset Neck Road and the path out to Great Island and some of the beaches on Cape Cod Bay side. Uh, and there, they're mostly interested in accommodating bicycles. All right, so now it gets to the mapping exercise, and this is where we really want your input. Uh, what we're going to do is put out, uh, I think based on the numbers we hear here, we're going to put out um, two maps, break up into two different tables. Each table will have uh, at least a couple of our steering committee members uh, who will help guide. But we've broken um, the region down into seven segments, and we're looking for you to tell us in each of those segments what is your prefer preference for the primary group. So if you look... So this map shows all three preferred alternatives in the three different colors. Uh, but you can see with the horizontal black lines that we've broken it up into these seven segments. And at the beginning and end of each segment, all three of the alternatives come together. So they are logical break points. You can choose any color alternative in one segment, and it'll automatically connect to whatever color alternative is chosen in the next segment. Um, we're going to give you colored dots because we have had so much success working with colored dots in our previous workshops. Uh, so the idea is we'll have five minutes in each segment. Uh, for example, just if you were looking at uh, the Truro segment, the Truro North segment, which is um, just south of the Beach Point area, you could say that if you preferred the red route, which is the path that includes the head of the Meadow Bike Trail, you would take a red dot and place it on that route. If you prefer the option of the multi-use path along Route 6, you would take a green dot and place it on that green route. Or if you preferred the option that runs up um, South Highland and then takes a turn onto Highland Road and along 6A, which is blue, you would put a blue dot on that. So we're going to take five minutes on each of the seven segments, give people a chance to put down their dots, and then, um, then reconvene to sort of wrap things up. Question. Or I have a question. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be addressed later on in the presentation, but we're talking about routes now. What happens when people get to their destination? Are you guys taking into consideration parking and racks and things like that? That'll all be part of the master plan, definitely. Right now, we're focusing on the route itself. Um, so I think you know, if you want to take into consideration the existence of those accommodations right now versus the potential for them to be constructed or added at a later time. Um, that's the kind of comment that we could you know, write right onto the maps in addition to placing the dots. Um, but I think right now, I, I think our focus is to pick the primary route, and then from that, we'll move to the secondary routes and, and all of the sort of uh, accessory resources that, that we need to have. Uh, that will be part of the full master plan that will uh, you know, sort of support the route selection after it's made. Surfaces because I know in the rail trail in Provincetown, some places it is pretty hard. In other places, it's like walking at the beach. It's very yeah. Well, well, the question, the question. Sure. So the question was, could we describe the hardened surface that we're talking about in the unpaved areas? And the fact is, we don't have a specific surface that we've chosen. Um, the Park Service and some other agencies have actually done tests on various types of hardened surfaces in the past, um, but. Um, you know, not, not here on Cape Cod. So we need to take into account the conditions that we have, the type of soil we have, and things like that. I think if we end up choosing a route that that's an issue, that's when we'll be delving into um, those options in a little more detail. I think we have some confidence that there are options out there that are successful because we know of a number of places, whether it's Acadia or other New England parks that have hardened services that are used for bicycles and as well as other um, types of transportation. It won't be like what's on the rail trail now. It won't be that good. Yeah, I think right now, are you talking about the Provincetown segment? No. Or? Well, what, what the current Cape Cod rail trail? Right, which is paved. Yeah, it's oh, paved. It would be a non-asphalt, so right? That's it would not be the same. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like that. Right. And we may need to deal with something like a, the fact that we need 
to roll it every year, so that kind of thing. And we'll yeah. be thinking about the operational needs, too, of that service. Right, so the, the fact that if we choose a different service, it would require different maintenance, and that's understood, uh, certainly. So that's part of the choice. Question in front. So what the issue is that maybe a balloon tire bicycle can navigate almost any surface. But if you're riding a racing bike or something from Orleans to uh, Provincetown, are you going to have to walk your bicycle over these non -paved That streets? would not be the intent, no. The intent would be a hardened surface. You can think, I guess, um, if you can think of what a T-base is, like if, if you're laying down the road before you put the pavement down, it's a very hard, pretty solid surface that even someone with narrow tires could negotiate. It's not I don't see that as being plausible. I don't see how you can you can you could ride a narrow tire, you know, racing street bicycle, whatever they're called, on any sort of surface that's not paved. I mean, I, I think that the idea of any sort of path anywhere that's not paved, it's kind of ridiculous for anybody other than someone walking their dog. Um, well, so that's perfect for, I mean, and that's why we're asking every individual to place down their, yeah. their vote on what their preference would be. If, you, if that's your opinion, then you would obviously choose one of the other colored routes um, throughout the entire length of the area. Um, so, one more question over here. Just, I'm wondering what the dots are that are not connected to the routes on these maps, just so I know informationally what, what are the dots that are sort of scattered around there. I'm sorry, can you say There are dots on that map that are not connected to the Oh, the yes, dots. I'm sorry, I should have pointed those out. So the purple dots on the map, are those are the destinations that were identified earlier in the planning process, the places that people wanted to be able to have access to, um, and they're all access, accessed either by a primary or secondary proposed route. There are uh, different kinds of bike riders on, on these trails, and one is the true bike rider, uh, and all the small summer long we have these huge packs of uh, bike riders that they go through, sometimes as many as 5,000, and uh, they all want to do six, fast and easy, and get to the top of town and ride them. The other type of rider is the scenic rider. Every shot at the ocean or at the bay, those are the things they want. And you're really asking for one solution for both groups. And there isn't one solution for both groups. And uh, my biggest concern is, is the budget enough to, to do what has to be done? Route 6 is killing the people. We've had two deaths so far in this year in East Ham, there's one uh, in last year in Wilkley. This is not an easy game that you're playing here. It's safety, safety, safety. Right. Well, and that's one of our primary goals, um, certainly safety. And I, I think, you know, we're not as a group going to actually choose the preferred alternative. We're, we're gathering input and asking you to tell us, but it's up to the steering committee of the towns really to come up with the final selection of the preferred alternative. But our hope is that we can accommodate everybody, both um, both the people who are interested. Maybe they won't all be accommodated with their preferred route on the primary alternative, but there will be so many secondary routes that are that will have improved treatment either through signage or striping or <coughs> some other means that they can be. And secondly, I rode uh, from Topsy all the way down to Cambridge, and every once in a while they come across T base, and I would ride on a narrow bike, narrow uh, tire bike. It's awful. First of all, it breaks up very much more quickly than a paved road does. Secondly, there's no budget for anybody to repair these things on a timely basis. So you, you find yourself going into ruts going in. Thirdly, when it does break up, it's very sharp uh, pieces remaining, which give you a flat back. Okay. Tell you well, thanks for that comment. I, should, I knew I shouldn't have thrown out an actual service material. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> uh, alternative B, just so that we understand it, will that include widening 6A? Um, see, alternative, alternative B, B that takes that follows along Route 6A, not necessarily widening as so much. It, sometimes it would it could involve some widening, but it could also just be striping, restriping to create the path um, for the bicycles. You know, there's the actual width of pavement changes a lot on all of these local roads, and so I think in some areas, we'd be talking about just redrawing lines and in other areas actually widening somewhat. But I think it's understood throughout the process 
uh, one of our major concerns is changes of character. And um, we've heard it loud and clear from folks that they don't want to see um, these scenic local roads widened um, if it's going to have a big impact on character resources. Two questions. Uh, first, you mentioned the four foot wide pay payout on some of the roads. Is that on both sides? Yes. Could you repeat that question? Sure, yeah. So she asked whether when we were talking about the bicycle accommodation being a paved path, uh, four foot wide paved path, whether that would be on both sides of the road, and the answer is yes. Oh, okay. And the second question, once the infrastructure is in place, who is responsible for the cost of maintaining, uh, upgrading, uh, taking care of it, cleaning it, et cetera? Is it the towns or who? It's going to be a mix. Um, it'll all depend on what route is chosen, whether it's, you know, if it's the state highway that's chosen, or if it's a local road, or if it's a route through the park. It's going to be a combination of everybody. All right. And I think I'd really like to move us on to the, um, to the actual mapping exercise. So I'm going to say if folks on this side of the room could go to the table on the left, or my left, and folks on this side of the room could go to the table on the right, and we're going to have maps of God's read. It's safer coming off here on a level grade. Exactly. Well, it's, it's safer. Well, it's what, on, if, if people want to well, draw, I mean, how much am I allowed to write in here? Yeah, you, you can draw it. Exit, right? The trail comes out right up to there. Uh, parking lot there. And the French uh, restaurant. It's, it's adjacent to it, about okay. the entire oh, okay. thing. Very, so this part is very similar to the existing bike trail. Okay, great. And then the green, that's just Route 6, right? Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. There's the yellow room. All right, thank you everybody for participating in that. Um, we did not anticipate that everyone would have the same ideas. It would be an obvious, just one color and the dots on all them. But I thought folks might like to see what everyone else in the room has put on. So um, take a look at the two different maps and all the dots and see if we can see any similarity between the two of them. But as I mentioned earlier, the point of today was not to actually select an alternative, was to get, we wanted your input. There's a lot of other sources of input. Um, and if you know people who would be interested in this and you want to recommend that they provide comments on our website uh, or talk to their steering committee member in their town or contact the Kinkai Commission, all those avenues are open. Uh, we'll be working now on uh, working with the steering committee to, based on your input and everything else, to try to select the preferred uh, alternative for the primary route through the area. And then we'll be following that up with meetings with the towns, talking about the secondary routes. Um, it's a lot easier to talk about the details of those once we know what the primary route would be. And, and certainly, I heard a number of people talking about is there more to this. There is a lot more. It's not just designating the routes. There's public education, there's funding, there are a lot of elements to the master plan that go beyond actually selecting the route. So, um, so there's a lot more here. Uh, so, what am I forgetting? Um, oh, so that really from a timetable perspective, what's coming next is uh, once we've worked with the steering committee uh, and then with the towns individually on the secondary routes, and priorities. We'll be putting together the master plan. It'll take both the draft and then a final form. And we're targeting late winter of 2016 to put that out. Um, so there's still several months left that people can comment and um, ask questions if you have any. Um, and with that, am I forgetting anything? So hidden under the maps now, Roger Chavet um, said if there's anyone here who could use either the uh, bicycle belts or armbands that he brought, they're extras, you're welcome to take one on your way out. And, um, and I just want to thank everybody for participating today. We really appreciate you taking the time to come. Any any final questions or comments? Got to right uh, next, second. next uh, any idea of when will uh, be the next meeting? Well, at, as of right now, the next meetings will be in, individually in the towns. So we're hoping to schedule those town meetings Possibly uh, they could start in early December. We're going to try to avoid the holiday season though, and so January is probably a little bit more likely. Uh, but I promise you that the bicycle committees in your town will, um, will 
be involved in selecting the dates, and so they should be well publicized, uh, and they'll certainly be up on our website, which reminds me that I should advance one more slide here. So if you're not familiar with our website, it's the Kid Cut Commission website, uh, and then it's the, the um, acronym for this, um, OCBPMP, Outer Cape Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan. Um, so you can find it there. Will there be another meeting before the round is uh, picked between all the towns? There won't be another uh, regional workshop like this, but there will be steering committee meetings. And that's something that all the town uh, bike and ped committee members will be involved in. Anyone else? All right, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.